loosen it up and then you shoot it. It's like an oyster. It's like you shuck it, yeah. yeah. All right. Shuck the Benbo. Bob Mondo. Benbo. Houston, Texas is known for a few things. Pro sports, the oil industry, the NASA Space Center, and Vietnamese food. We're gonna do our best to give you a preview of Bel Air Boulevard by hitting a modern bun mi chains, traditional Hue restaurants, and even a place that only specializes in bumbo Hue. This is the Fun Bros in Texas. Okay, so expanding on the Vietnamese scene out in Houston, we are joined now with our friend Jack here. What's up, guys? Outside of this spot called Nam Gao. They specialize in Hue dishes. It's kind of like Vietnamese dim sum. Super good. Let's go. This is the only city where I've seen this type of concept in, so I'm really excited. Midi rice pancakes. It's all gold with the uh, this pizza. What about these? It's also go with this Okay, also go with this one, okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Anyway, um, as you know, we are still trying to uh, offer more of the uh, Vietnamese food. The yeah. noodles is different too. Making more varieties of the noodles. So we want to offer something different and healthy. All right, so originally we had said Vietnamese dim sum. I don't think they call it that, but these are Vietnamese appetizers that we've never had before. They look like dim sum. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, it's quite oh, unique. Uh, I've never had this baby clam salad before. No, I actually never had this baby So you came here before, but you never had Nah. Baby clam doo -doo 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 -doo. Ooh, thank you. Baby clam doo -doo -doo -doo. Now it's like a salad, but it has it's mixed in with rice. Baby clam salad. It reminded me of one of those calm pan plates, but with more seafood. You got the little clam flavor in there. Mm. Mm. Wow, really, really unique. So these are the things that really make it feel like dim sum. You have the pork and shrimp crystal dumplings. This is like the Vietnamese mochi on top of a crispy slice of mochi. And or maybe some chiu influence in this. David Chang ate this for Ugly Delicious. And I did, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That does look like a, kind of a dim sum filling. Wow. It was like pepper char siu with like shrimp. Mmm. Kind of like mm. a char siu pork and shrimp. This is almost like a Viet mochi. It's a, it looks it's like a mochi yeah. on mochi. Um, but I want to tell you about this. I'm going to go in on this mochi bite. Dip it in this dipping fish sauce right here. Half dunk. Boom. Mmm. That was such a crazy mixture of like textures. Yeah. Super crispy, stretchy, and chewy. Let's see what's in this. There we go. It's kind of similar to the dumpling. Okay, similar to the. It's like a lot of that hot churn texture, huh? Yeah. It's it's some sauce. Mmm. The dumpling or the lotus leaf. That, that's personally my favorite. Now. Oh, we got another one? Hell yeah. Yeah, it kind of looks like a tamale, but it's different. This is the uh, snail. So this yeah. is this is wow. chopped up snail inside the sausage. Mm. Wow, no, that's not bad. It is really good. Dip in the sauce a little bit like that. Sauce. Mmm. You like? I actually really like it. You taste like just a hint of snail, just around ham and pork. Bun bill. This is like that steamed rice cake. I found it interesting the way that you kind of sure. loosen it up and then you shoot it. It's like an oyster. It's like you shuck it. Yeah. Right. Shuck the Benbo. Bob Mondo. Benbo. Mmm. That might be the best Bum Bell I've ever had. All right, you guys, let's try the Houston Nem Noon. Mmm. Hit it with a little sauce. Feels fresh. That's the, called the Happy Crispy Rice Cake, and then this is the classic Bun Sayo. It's like a taco. Yeah, like a Mexican pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Open, open face. Maybe a little bit of greens here. Happy crispy rice cake. Wow. Mmm. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. mm. Wow. It was very eggy. I like that one. Definitely eggy. Ooh. Okay, similar ingredients. From the middle of Vietnam and that one from the south of Vietnam. Basically, it's the same. It comes with pork belly on the inside, I think. This is like yeah. a souped up bun say. Oh my gosh. This is... Look at these shrimps, how they're marinated. I don't know. I taste more pork in this one. The filling's thicker, there's more sprouts. The skin is a bit thinner here. All right, both were really good, but if you come here, you gotta try the Hui one too. The way is the Hui here. The way is the, <laughs> I can't even say it. This is Bon Hoi. It's kind of like vermicelli noodles in like the form of a pancake. Almost like a vermicelli rice roll. It's like one of those, uh, you know, grow a grass. Like it's turf. <laughs> this is the uh, like vermicelli turf. These noodles are amazing. The texture is so really soft. Yeah, really soft. 
I don't know, it might be the best Viet restaurant I've ever been to. Right off Bel Air, obviously in Houston. The flavors and the care that they took. To put it simply, I think Nam Gao lived up to the hype. We're finally ending it off with some coffee. Hey, two-tone. I'm gonna mix it up first while it's still hot. Ooh. Oh, strong. I think the, the Vietnamese food here in Houston is the best. Houston is just way easier. Like the rent is cheaper, the cost so of labor is cheaper. Just saying when the cost of labor is cheaper and the rent is cheaper, it allows you to deliver better value, right? Better value. It's, you could bring traditional concepts from Hue to Houston. The businessman restaurateur, Hustle Up with Jack Liang. All right, guys, if you haven't hit the like button on this video already, hit that like button. Check out Jack's info down below. But on to the next spot. All right, you guys, we are looking here at Brew Star Grill, which is almost like a, a mainstream version of a bun me, but I still think it's authentic enough to appeal to the local Vietnamese people or Asians who grew up eating bun me's. Yo, this is the special one. With the egg. Oh my gosh. You know what I love about this special combination is like they kind of actually cook the meat a little bit. Mmm. That's good as hell. Nice chunk of jalapeno in there. Setting my whole mouth on fire, but I love it. I love the bread here. It's crispy. It's got plenty of mayonnaise. Yo, you guys, this is the beef curry. I didn't expect this. It tastes Thai. Mmm. Well, they do have a papaya salad here. I think it's cool that a lot of Vietnamese people, they even went through Thailand before coming to America. So there is definitely some Thai influence in a lot of Vietnamese American spots. Mmm. Wow. Pungent enough, but not too strong. Have you ever seen chicken wings presented like this, though? On a bed of vermicelli noodles. Hey, so far so good. Mm. All right, Andrew, we gotta get the chopped ribeye. I'm gonna make sure I get a nice little chunk of jalapeno in there because the bun me is not the bun me without the jalapeno. Mm. Mm. Wow. 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 Between the chopped ribeye and the special, crazy. I think the mayonnaise is really sweet. The meat's delicious. The bun mi is the perfect kind of Trojan horse for people to try Asian food. It's Asian enough, but it's really in a sandwich form and everybody loves sandwiches. I would say the chopped ribeye and the special with the egg in them were amongst some of the best bun meats I've ever had in my entire life. I think that there is something very special about this mixture between Vietnamese and Texas. Andrew, I'm gonna go ahead and give Rue Star Grill. And I'm not uh, saying uh, this. Uh, uh, I'm gonna give it a five out of five Ooh. on Yelp. I think it speaks volumes to how deep the Vietnamese are out in Houston. That was a dope fusion between Vietnamese, Thai, and Texas. On to the next. All right, you guys, you know that we could not leave Houston with all the great Vietnamese food that is here without having some pho. We had to get our Houston native friend, Bob, right here to come with us. What's up, guys? Pho 54, if it doesn't have a number behind it, you know it ain't good. What's so good about Pho 54 real quick? Man, you want pho? Okay. This is the spot to go. There's like a couple spots that all the Houstonians know. This is one of them. All right. All this is super cheap. It's cheap. It's super, super cheap. It's cheap. It's cheap. Dude. You're right. All right, guys, here's what we have here. Here you have the classic pho dak viet, the pho special that we got to try. This is like a dry pho ga, and then this is actually the dipping sauce for it. And then you have bone marrow and just a bowl of it. And you then take you take the French bread. Oh, that's so fluffy, too. I'm just going to do this right now, man. I can't wait. Oh. <laughs> Bone marrow baguette. So good. Wow. That is incredible. That's so decadent, man. Mmm. Okay. The beef pieces in here are, feel super tender. Let me try. Dude, this is solid. Beef was really amazing because obviously it's still sourced locally from Texas, I'm sure. I believe this was called Fuga Co. I'm going to just take this, dip it like Sukimen noodles. This is the pho gakko, aka the dry chicken pho. Wow. For me, give me the pho gakko, the chicken, the Hainan chicken pieces. <clears throat> That's delicious. Mmm. Would you say that that was packing more flavor than you thought? Oh, hell yeah. There's this what? sauce on it. I think it's like a sweet soy sauce, fish sauce that they put on the noodles already. That's where this, that dark color is coming from. Yeah, I think this is the wowing dish here. The bone marrow baguette dip was $4.95. What? Immediately, I'm not really liking the look of the egg rolls. Okay, lettuce wrapped egg rolls. It was still good, but I gotta give it to California. All right, you guys, 
Last but not least, we have a non-Vietnamese dish. We have the ghost pepper wings from uh, Hot Ones. They said super, super, super spicy on the menu. We are in H-Town with the H-Town native. Babu, these are your streets, Bel Air, right? They are, man. Jalapeno pepper, there's habanero, and there's ghost pepper. I noticed the pepper. food in Houston's not necessarily that spicy. All right, whatever, man, try, try it. Hey, <laughs> hey, are you a Texan or what? This are right, you a Texan? Go, let's go, let's go, cheers, cheers. Guys, cheers. <clears throat> I can feel a creep right now. I'm not gonna pretend. That's a Easy. Watch this. You're gonna regret that. Okay, I'm feeling it now. <laughs> this was an amazing segment here at Fuff 54 in Bel Air, Little Saigon. Bob, what, what's the last thing you wanna tell the people about H-Town? I mean, what's not to love about Houston? Next stop on our Vietnamese crawl through Houston, guys, we have Vinh Hoa or Vinh Hoa. I'm not sure how to say it. So we are at a Chinese Vietnamese seafood spot. If you guys know about the history of Chinese in Vietnam, had a lot of interaction for hundreds of years. This is essentially one of those mixed spots. Yeah. Yo, I'm excited because in 626, there is quite a bit of Chinese Vietnamese food, but looking at these pictures, this looks a little different than the spots at 626, so yeah. I'm you excited. You had this before? I've never had this. I've never seen anything like this in New York City. Let's it's get it. Fun. All right, you guys, two of our dishes have arrived here at Vinh Hoa. We've got the razor clams, Ooh. but with a basil jalapeno sauce. Yo, you guys ready to try this? Let's do it. Super expensive in Hong Kong. Mm. Mm. This wow. one is a little bit extra spicy. So the owner of uh, Vinh Hoa is actually a uh, Chiu Jiao guy from Vietnam. So he's uh, Chiu Jiao Yulam Hoa Kiu, which is uh, basically like a Chinese person who was born and raised in Vietnam. Okay. All right, you guys, let's get in on this lobster. So right off the bat, David, it smells like this is cooked with some fish sauce. Ooh, it has a little bit of that wow. pungentness. You guys, how special lobster here at Vinh Hoa? Have you had any flavor like that before? That was kind of like how you imagine like a nuke mom wing to taste, except for lobster. A little bit of fish sauce, some sweetness, some lime. So far, so good. Wow. Yo, we had to order wow. the coconut snails, bro. Coconut sea snails. It, it smells amazing. It's very fragrant. So put the, uh... Mmm. Suck it through the big hole. <laughs> I've never had anything like this. Yeah, this is like a little booger right now. Yo, I would put that sauce on top of rice and just eat that. Wow. Wow. Yo. They put a little masago on the top. Have you ever seen this before? Never seen this before. I've never seen it presented like this. Never. Let's pop the hood. Let's see what's underneath. Wow. Oh, they took it out for you. Wow. Whoa. Oh, the crab guts, the head Oh, guts. that looks oh. amazing. I'm just gonna eat it back into Ooh. the crab head. Look at that. Look at those textures, the colors. I just got my own uh, little crab bowl here. Mmm. You got the egg, you got the crab guts, you got the crab meat, you got the crab sauce that they cook the crab in. The seafood flavor is strong. I can see why all the Asians love this place. The Vietnamese influences would probably be in the leaf, but I will be honest, this dish is not the most Vietnamese out of them all. You have the snails, which is a little bit more Vietnamese. You have this crab, which is more Chinese, and then the razor clams is pretty half-half. The lobster is pretty half-half. Man, this spot is really a true mixture. I gotta say that that is a very subtle flavor, but if you appreciate sort of like seafood umami subtlety, that is amazing. Yo, you guys, look at these clams. Sea clams, $9 a pound. Holy Ooh. sh... Look at this. Ooh, very, very light. Just a little bit salty, but really letting the clam shine with a little bit of scallion on there. You gotta drink, drink that. Drink the juice. Ooh, very subtle, very clean flavor. That was a very Chinese flavor. Yeah. Alright you guys, we are on our final leg of our Vietnamese tour here in Houston, Texas, the Bel Air District. Right. Jack, you were like, alright, we gotta go to Duck Fuong. But then we got here and it's a, it's a takeaway spot. It was the wrong spot. Because we're looking for Bumble Hue, the BBH. Obviously there's a lot of names, we're not good at telling the difference. Right. So we went to a different duck. We went to the Duck, duck Fong. Fong. We're looking for Duck Chuang. So we gotta run across the street. We gotta go across the street, alright. Right, it says Bumble Hui, Duck Chuang. I think we're here, let's go. 
Okay, the Bumble Hue has just arrived. We're here at Duck Chuang. I looked into it, they have multiple locations, but they only serve Bumble Hue at these spots. Wow. This is the thing they specialize in. One dish in this particular location serves boba or on the sign outside, uh, it's booba. Look at these lines. We gotta taste this. Oh my gosh. Oh my. We got the large bowls. This is huge. Let's just take a look at this. If you look at this mountain, Boom. Dude, this is definitely on a level of authenticity that I've never been exposed yeah, to. Man. I didn't put any lime in it because I want to taste it pure. Wow. Wow. Mmm. This is crucial. I saw that in the comments. A lot of people yeah. recommend putting extra shrimp paste in it. Yeah. Jack, what do you like about Bumble Page even more than like, you know, your standard club? There's just so many ingredients in the Bumble Way. Like, I don't even know what half the things in here are. They take so much time to make this Bumble Way. Like, Oh, you had to go with more shrimp paste. Oh, you liked it that much. Yeah. <laughs> from a uh, business standpoint, what is the benefits from cooking just one thing and specializing in it? If you specialize in one thing, your restaurant is more likely to succeed. Just become known for that dish, you're more likely to succeed. and People are more likely to come, for you, come to you for that. The cost of goods are lower. You're ordering the same product. You're teaching the same staff how to make this. And yet, people want this, right? It's like the Starbucks coffee. Like people know what they want. It's that time of the meal. I'm gonna squeeze my lime in. Uh huh. It's almost hard to describe the flavor of Bumble Hue because it's so complex. Do you like the pigs? Oh, I do like the pig foot, but I don't like to eat the whole thing. I just, okay. I just like a bite or two. Pig, pig feet. Pig knuckle. Mm. Mm. So many different textures in this Bumble Hue. For me, in pho, sometimes I don't like to add anything into it. But for the bumble hue, I'll always add the cabbage and the, and the add-ons. Mm. Bumble hue or pho? I think pho generally and consistently hits the spot more, but a good bumble hue is hard to match, man. This is like, there's so much flavor in this. Oh my gosh, just look at this. Basically for me, I would say that the best bumble hue probably beats the best pho. I agree. This bumble hue is, is unmatched. Oh my yeah. goodness. All right, you guys, that was the end of our Vietnamese crawl through Houston, Texas. I know there was a ton of spots we didn't get a hit up. There will be a ton of spots that we will get to next time, yeah. but I thought this was a great starter trip. All right, guys, make sure you like that video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below what other spots in Texas we should hit up for next trip. All right, guys, until next time, we out. Peace. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Just want to let you know we do have a brand new podcast called the A3N Podcast. We're talking about all types of stuff. We're gonna have all types of guests on the show. Obviously, if it's me and David, we're gonna get really deep and personal and real. Also, we have a highlights channel. If you guys don't wanna listen to the whole entire podcast, there's gonna be like the highlight clips there that you guys can just check out. Check out the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Himalaya, A3M Podcast. Leave us a review and a like. And listen to it. Peace. Peace.